On today's episode, we have a very, very special guest and just a badass guest all around. It is Casey Joe joining us. And Casey is a published researcher, mindset and behavior change expert, coach, mentor, instructor, foodie, traveler, and dog mom. She has her PhD in psychology, and her main focus is to build strong bodies and healthy lifestyles, starting with mindset. Casey values science, experience, education, and connection, along with cold brew coffee, which we can both heavily relate on. And (laughs) she is also very anti-bullshit, which I heavily relate to as well. She loves being able to provide evidence-based content without the scientific mumbo-jumbo and free resources that will allow you to learn the science of mindset, nutrition, and exercise in a way that's easy for you to learn and implement into your life. So welcome to the show, Casey Jo. Yay! I'm so excited to be here. Yes, I'm very very excited to have you. It's been fun of like, I always forget, honestly, how connected some of us in our like relationships are. And sometimes when someone will be like, oh, do you know who Casey is? I'm like, yeah, I know who freaking Casey is. Like, what <laughs> do you mean? But then it's like, I feel like we've also been around for quote unquote so long that people don't even know like the intricacies of how everyone knows everyone. So right. it's like, oh, if you're not in that person's content or constantly like in that, then it's like, are, do you guys even know each other? And I'm right. Like, I do. It actually, me and Sue have been friends for years at this years, point, which is no crazy. But it's true. I like people would probably have no idea that we have any idea who each other are, but exactly. it's been a long time. <laughs> I know. But uh, that makes me all the more excited to bring you on to the podcast. And especially with one of your offers, we were just talking about it off air um, coming up, and your enrollment is starting in August and something very exciting because we're going to be diving into some different things within coaching practices and mindset, but something within one of her offers offers, which is the health mindset coaching certification, is we are actually putting all of the PD coaches through in this um, next enrollment in August. So I am extremely, extremely excited to hear you talk about it even more um, and let everyone who's listening know about how incredible of an offer it is, uh, but also just like very internally jazzed about having everyone go through it. Yeah. It's so fun when entire teams go through HMCC together because it doesn't, it's not just an opportunity for everyone on the team to get this certification in health mindset coaching, but it's really like a team building opportunity too, to have all of you guys go through it together. And then you can talk about it on the side, you know, how is this going to be integrated into our coaching? What do we think? What do you guys think about that? And so it's just so fun to have everybody sort of on the same page and going through it and can be really fun from, yeah, again, just like a team building community perspective too. Yes. I couldn't agree more. And even when I talked to everyone on the team, that's what they were most excited about. They were like, oh, we get to all talk about it together Mm -hmm. and kind of bounce ideas. And I was like, yes, I'm jazzed for that. But I also don't want to forget to mention your new podcast, which is not another mindset show. So how has that been going? I believe you're four or five episodes in. Yeah, yeah. We are brand new, brand new. Been talking about it for like a year and a half, but is actually brand new as of yeah, almost a month at this point. Yeah. June 17th was our first episode launch. But yeah, I think I'm ahead. I think I have like 16 episodes batched and we're putting one out every single week. But I just know myself at this point and I need to do it that way. Like sit down, record like six to eight in a week and that be just like my main focus for the week and then shut it down and (laughs) focus on other things. But it's been fun. My plan for now is mainly solo episodes. I don't really plan on having guests on. I do a lot of what we're doing right now, guesting on other people's shows. And I've been doing that. I think when I went back and counted, I'm close to over a hundred different shows that I've been on. So it's just like, I've, I'm at the point where I'm like, I've done a lot of the interview type of style stuff. And like, although everyone can be different and me interviewing someone else would be a different experience. I'm like, I just want to sit down and talk to my people for like 30 minutes and then call it quits. Um, however, as you likely know very well, sitting down and just talking and having like a full, like, this is a run sheet essentially of what I want to talk about. It requires a lot more like planning rather than like, oh, I can like just riff off of someone else. Like I have to riff off myself. (laughs) So I have noticed like, okay, this is, um, it's not just sit down and press record. It's, I have to plan this out and then sit down and make sure I, I, I go the direction I want to. When I stay on track, I'm very tangential a lot of the time. So like keeping myself going in the direction I want to go, but it's been fun so far. And I've noticed a lot Like when I talk to you, I'm sure I will leave 
with three or four ideas for my own podcast episode. And that's just kind of what kept happening over and over again. And like, I just, I should just sit down and like go for 30 minutes on these topics rather than maybe I'll make this an Instagram post or a blog post later or something like that. So, but yeah, it's been fun so far. I love to hear that. And it is hard to riff off yourself and it does take a lot more planning because I find that there's some episodes that I really have to sit down and I'm spending hours on the outline to make sure everything's set. And then there's some that I walk into with Alex and I might have like five sentences <laughs> and we're just like, we're going to talk about this thing and we yeah. can go off about it. And that's actually why I started doing the Gym Girl Chats episodes. I know I talked to you about being on that. So if anyone's listening to this and you're like, I want to hear you guys chit chat some more, yeah. we will record another one. Uh, but it was because I was like, oh my gosh, there's so many of these interview type podcasts. I want it to be that it's just like me and my friends hanging out and being able to chit chat. Um, but that's why I also have studied so much on how how to interview people because I know what it's like to be a guest on someone else's podcast. And you're just like, like Alex and I have been on different people's podcasts, of course. And sometimes like one person will ask us like multiple years apart or multiple months apart. <laughs> and then we'll give insight of just like, hey, keep this in mind with this person of like, they don't ask a follow up question or you're going to have to give your full entirety of an answer as quick as possible because they'll move on to the next thing. And they just have a list of questions they're going through. Uh, so I'm like, I want to make sure I never make someone feel that way that I'm just like pushing them along this list of questions. Oh, that's amazing. Because I definitely it's funny you say that because I think part Part of not not the full reason by any means, but part of the reason I don't even want to do the let's bring people on and do the interview type of thing is because I have been interviewed so many times and I feel a little bit like, do I know how to be a good interviewer? You know, I get I get off some of these podcasts and I'm like, okay, that wasn't the greatest, you know, like, oh wow, they asked really good questions. And I would like to be that person, but I worry that I'm not. And so I kind of after so many times it gets into you kind of get into your head of like, do I even know how to be a good interviewer? I don't know. So like, you know what? Problem solved. I just won't ever interview yeah. anyone. No, but it works because you're an incredible speaker. Like I've heard you talk at events, been at events speaking with you uh, at them, and you are really great at talking. So it suits you that you'll be able to just sit there. And I, I've I've listened to a few of the episode so far. I'm not all the way caught up, um, but they are really great. And I I don't expect anything less moving forward. Aww, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> well, we're going to dive into everything within some coaching tips and mistakes and talking about things like uncoachable clients, clients that make you kind of want to pull your hair out. Um, but I actually have a few different uh, quotes that I had pulled out. I, I did my research, dug into you a little bit <laughs> before this, but I thought that they were very powerful and they'll kind of loop into everything within the concept of uncoachable clients. But you had a quote on a post and it said, easy doesn't build strong skills. And then in the caption, you had wrote of, if something is difficult for you, that has nothing to do with your ability to be successful. And I thought that that was an incredible place to start, not only because in and of itself, I was like, I need to write this down and I need to use this quote somehow because this is so powerful, where a lot of times people do think that needs to be easy to some degree, uh, but really being able to break that down, especially going into like a fixed mindset versus a growth mindset, a lot of it comes from uh, being able to recognize that just because something comes difficult, that has nothing to do with your ability to truly be successful. Yeah, yeah. And this is a perfect like immediate segue into growth versus fixed mindset because really, truly, someone who has a fixed mindset is often going to assume that if something is difficult for them, that if it doesn't come easy to them, then it's not meant for them. And whereas someone with a growth mindset would see difficulty as sort of expected and maybe somewhat welcomed because, oh, this is not going to be easy for me right away, but as it gets easier, then I know I'm progressing, then I know I'm getting closer to my goal, then I know I'm getting better, I'm improving this ability, this situation for myself. So seeing difficulty as something that you almost want in a way is like a fast track to a growth mindset and honestly a fast track to success. Because then what happens if it does come a little bit easier to you or it does like seem to be a little bit more quote unquote natural, then that's just a nice surprise at that point rather than it being the expectation. And I think where people can get really caught up to those who have more of a fixed mindset, they see other people being successful in a certain area, whether it's health and fitness, it's business, it's relationships, whatever. And then they get in their head about like, well, I can't have that because that person has these traits 
traits, these qualities, these things that were handed to them that I simply cannot have. Like that's not something that's possible for me. So once they get into it themselves and it doesn't come easily, it's like, well, then I'm just, I'm not like that person. I can't be that type of person. And then it becomes evidence for their fixed mindset, supporting their fixed mindset that they're not capable rather than, oh, this is just an obstacle. This just is a little bit more difficult for me, but it doesn't mean anything. And that is a really, really big part about mindset in general. It's just like, what meaning are you assigning to things? Yeah, I absolutely love that. And that even pushes perfectly into another post that you had written and that is so powerful because someone might be listening to this and thinking like, oh, well, of course, I don't expect things to be easy. I don't have a fixed mindset. I actually, I want this growth, but you don't understand it is just harder for me or I just don't have these things. And you said that um, you made a post of saying the addiction that no one is talking about. And it was the addiction to a fixed mindset. And I think that this is where people need to bridge the gap is that it's you believe that you're not capable and that lets you off the hook from realizing that you are freaking capable and you're just not showing up for what you need to do. And again, I think a lot of people that have a fixed mindset, and even if you're in the place that you're trying to grow into that growth mindset, that you're like, well, I'm I'm not comfortable. I'm very uncomfortable. But it's like that that discomfort seems less to you than what actually pushing to do something else is. Mm -hmm. And again, that's where we need to bridge the gap of recognizing the discomfort that you're choosing every single day, but like cloaking it as comfort. Yeah, that's it's so interesting, right? Because I think we've we've all heard this this quote in some capacity before, of like choose your hard type of situation, but it's usually like okay, are you going to choose your hard of like being unhappy or choose your hard and go to the gym when you don't want to, you know that sort of thing. But in this capacity, like thinking about it from a mindset perspective, it's like okay, you can choose the discomfort of not changing, not being where you want to be, not seeing the success that you want to see, or you can choose the discomfort of things being difficult sometimes and you having to run into a wall of maybe not feeling like you identify as like an exerciser if we're talking from like a gym type of situation. And you can choose which discomfort you want to go with and they're both going to be uncomfortable. So it's kind of like, well, wouldn't you want to choose the one that is going to get you a little bit further to where you want to go? And I think this is really an important conversation because this conversation, this thought process, like really spending some time here, people may recognize that maybe it isn't what they want in the long run. Maybe it isn't worth that discomfort to them. And that's really important information to have rather than just keep keep trying and failing and coming back to this and thinking maybe it's not for me. I don't know. Like you just get stuck in this hamster wheel of discomfort, not actually going anywhere. And having this real, true, honest conversation with yourself of, is this actually something I want to do? Is it worth the change? Is it worth that discomfort? is really important to have. And I'm not saying that there are people out there who's like, okay, well, you can't have a healthy lifestyle. You can't like lose weight and keep it off and do all those things. You absolutely can. It just may be the way that you're currently doing it and trying to go for it may not be the best option for you based on like the level of discomfort that you have to put yourself through, the challenges, the sacrifices, whatever it may look like. There's likely another path and like getting very clear on that. Like, is there another path? Or do you even want to go down this path that you've set for yourself in the first place? And spending some time there to get really clear because ultimately if you don't actually want to do it, that's going to be a problem. <laughs> yeah. And it's not only realizing that there could be another path, but it's also the aspect of maybe the effort that you're willing to put in doesn't match the outcome that you are wanting. And you have to reestablish realistically, how does that work in my life of I may want to look like this and it's possible, 100% possible, but am I willing to take the trade-offs of what it takes to look that way? Am I willing to maybe not have as much flexibility in going out with my friends? Am I willing to have to put in this extra effort, whether it's doing cardio in the gym, prepping my food, whatever it may be, to get to that point. Mm -hmm. And that's not settling. It's really just having a realistic conversation with yourself. So when it comes to those honest conversations, this is something where I really struggle with when it comes to clients or just other people, and sometimes even myself, of how to be honest with yourself. Because some people don't even know how to do that, it feels. At least like that's what it feels like. You might be like, Sue, that's not actually true. But <laughs> it feels like people don't even understand what it means to be honest with themselves. And I've been in situations with like 
friends, clients, people in my life where I am seeing with their actions how everything is going, that there's friction, and they're telling me one thing of this is what I want. And I'm seeing very clearly that it's not, but they can't be honest enough with themselves to be able to accept this isn't actually what I want. So how does that kind of go into of truly having a hard conversation with yourself or an honest conversation with yourself? Oh, this is, yeah, this is such an interesting thing to think about in general because I I think I think you're on to something here and that most people aren't introspective enough in order to be able to have an honest conversation with themselves. You know, and I I almost like even be just going through everything I just went through and just talked about, I think I forget that sometimes, especially because like I am a very introspective person, probably to a fault. And a lot of the people that I surround myself with are, you included, are introspective people and very self-aware people. So I forget, you know, that the general population really isn't there and it's not to no fault of their own. You know, like we're in the health and fitness and wellness and honestly, like personal development space. So we spend a lot of time doing this like all day. I mean, what we're talking about right now is that stuff, you know, and we're doing it for our jobs. So remembering that some people that's just not a a natural go-to. And it doesn't mean that it can't be eventually. Like we weren't born this way, neither like neither of us or anybody who is a very self-aware, introspective person. So how do you help someone have an honest conversation with themselves if they don't really know actually how to get there? And I think honestly, this is where having a really good coach <laughs> can come into play. Obviously like therapy and things like that too. But if we're I talking like- around here. <laughs> Right. If um if we're talking like health and fitness and things like that, and you're noticing, yeah, maybe my my mindset or the way that I'm thinking to myself, the perspectives that I hold, the meaning that I'm assigning to things is getting in the way, or I'm having a hard time just sticking to this health and fitness stuff in general. Maybe I do need to have an honest conversation with myself, but I don't even know how to get there. Like this is where having a coach who is trained in order to help you with these things can be really helpful because you need someone to kind of give you that zoomed out approach perspective, ask you really good questions that'll help you arrive at certain solutions, conclusions, and understandings about yourself that you probably wouldn't be able to get there without being prompted. So this not to like pitch just like, oh, go hire a coach, but having someone in your life, whether it's a coach or someone else, be able to have the skill set to present you with those certain questions and help you get there can be really, really helpful. Yes, I think that that even goes to the thought of I'm not capable because I also might need help to get there. And they think because I can't do it on my mm. own, then I can't actually make this change. And then there is a lot of maybe guilt's not the right word, but um, just not feeling the best about having to ask for help because whether they feel like a burden or feel like they should already be able to do it themselves, I think that people get stuck into that headspace. And that's where, again, I have a hard time connecting because I am introspective. I am very interested in why I do what I do, when I do it, why I'm making certain decisions and where I want to go. And I think that between you and I and even conversations we had before this, of like, we have big goals for ourselves. And so that requires us to continue to level up. And that's not just within um, the skills of like owning a business, but it's in the skills of mindset. And mindset is a skill which can be learned. It's a, like you said, it's not something we're just born with. And so it's being able to recognize that it's okay if you aren't there yet, but you can get help and there are resources out there and there's no shame in having someone else help you grow. That's the only way I've ever grown. Like, yes, I've obviously done work on my own, but the most growth I've seen is when someone else is also looking at it with me, helping and working through it, whether that's with mentorship, whether that's with a coach, whether that's with therapy, um, or whether that's just having a conversation amongst multiple people. It's like that's where I've been challenged the most to grow because you only know what you know in your own brain and the reality that you've created or the narrative that you've created. And so having someone unbiased from a different perspective, like how can that hurt of just being able to have someone outside of your head? Because inside your head can be a scary place for some of us. <laughs> <laughs> totally. And I love that this kind of brings it full circle to what we were saying before about just being in, in that fixed mindset space, 
another thing that is very indicative of someone with a fixed mindset is someone who's not willing to seek help and resources. Because again, it's that sort of, I should be able to know how to do this myself. And if I can't, then I'm not meant for it, that I'm not good enough for it. I'm not the type of person for it. When the reality is having a growth mindset is being willing to seek out resources, to being willing to look for help, doing whatever you need to do in order to improve and get better because you know you're capable of it. You're aware, like this is like very basic growth versus fixed mindset. Someone with a growth mindset knows at the end of the day, they're capable of improving, developing, succeeding, whatever it is in that area. Someone with a fixed mindset doesn't necessarily believe that they can, even if it's just like a little voice in the back of their head telling them like, oh, you're not going to probably not going to do it this time either. It's not, you're not going to be successful doing it. Even if it's different this time, it's not going to, it's going to be the same as it always is, whatever. So if you're in that fixed mindset land, what's the point of looking for resources and reaching out to people if like ultimately you're not going to be successful anyway? So it's like, if you can't figure it out yourself, then you're kind of a lost cause, right? Versus someone with a growth mindset knows at the end of the day that they can be successful. So it's like, I'm kind of, I'm willing to do whatever it takes in order to get there because I know I can. So if that means hire a coach, hire a therapist, like spend more some time, like being introspective, like really asking myself these deeper questions, setting aside time for personal development, whatever. I know that's what will allow me to get there to that point. So I'm going to do it. So we can really clearly see here, like who's, who's more likely to be successful and get what they want in life, right? <laughs> it's crazy. Cause even listening, it's like so many times people have said of like, well, how are you going to do this? Or how do you know how to do this? And my thought is always like, no, but I will figure it out. Like I have no doubt in my mind, I will figure it out, whether it's hiring someone who does know what they're doing or being able to figure out the skill myself. I don't have a doubt in what I'm capable of. Like I truly, Alex has kind of given me this to a certain degree of like having so much confidence in myself and growth mindset that it's like, it's honestly annoying to some people because I'm just like, well, I'll figure it out regardless. So like, it's all good. And people with those fixed mindsets are just in a different place or like, what do you mean it's going to be all good? Everything is burning down. And it's like, yeah, <laughs> but like, I'll figure it out. Like the, what's the other option? Give up or figure it out. So I'll figure it out. Attention all coaches. Are you struggling with client adherence, retention, and motivation? And do your clients self-sabotage and lack the drive to succeed? We have the perfect solution for you. Starting August 8th, join Casey Joe and her expert team for The Coaching Code, a transformative and free three-part series designed to revolutionize your coaching approach and ensure lasting client results. Here's everything that you'll gain. In training one, it's all about the missing piece in nutrition and exercise certifications. You're going to discover the often overlooked elements that make coaching more effective and less frustrating. You're going to learn how to integrate these elements to streamline your coaching process. Going into training two is going to be all about communication strategies for behavior change. You will master the art of navigating challenging clients who frequently fall off the wagon. Equip yourself with specific actionable questions that boost client motivation and mindset. And rounding out at training three is the behavior change blueprint. You will uncover the four essential ingredients of effective coaching and ensure your clients stick to the plans and stop ghosting you. This series is a game changer. It's three powerful trainings, absolutely free and designed to make you a better coach and your clients more successful. Don't miss out on this win, win, win opportunity. Secure your spot now and transform your coaching practice. Click the link in the show notes to register and let's elevate your coaching together. And uh, I was curious on your thoughts, if you, if like within a fixed mindset and a growth mindset, if you would say that they're kind of on a spectrum of it's not just if someone has a fixed mindset or they have a growth mindset of it can kind of exist of different places on the spectrum. Yeah, 100%. And actually in the mindset research, any research I've been a part of, any research that exists where someone is evaluating someone's mindset from a fixed or growth perspective, we're using tools like assessments and scales in that regard. And people are never, if we have like a scale of one to six, so they're answering essentially six different questions. And then we're taking, using algorithms, statistics to figure out what is your number on the growth to, to fix, like fixed scale on a one to six, six being growth mindset, one being fixed mindset. Nobody is a one 
nobody is a six, you know, there's, they're always falling somewhere on along that continuum and moving towards either a growth mindset or a fixed mindset. So someone who is a 3.7 is actually probably a little bit more of a growth mindset or a little bit more of a fixed mindset, depending on like what direction you're looking at it here. Someone who is a five is obviously closer. We would say that person has a growth mindset, even though they're not a six, like on the dot. So in the research, for sure, like we see this continuum and it is never, never, never the case that someone is a hundred percent like fixed mindset or a hundred percent a growth mindset. And I actually think that that is something that is talked about incorrectly a lot, just in social media land and people just talking about mindset in just sort of like a flippant manner in that way that, oh, if you have a growth mindset or, oh, you have a fixed mindset. Like, no, like most people are just leaning one way or the other, which is actually a really good thing because it just means that you can, you can move the other direction if you need to, you know, and like doesn't, and it doesn't necessarily mean that if someone is like a two on that scale of one to six, being very close to a fixed mindset that they can't make their way to a five or whatever, that's definitely possible. So it is a little bit more fluid than I think most people think. Um, and honestly, it's like a, it's a little bit of a fixed mindset about growth versus fixed mindset. Like it's either you have it or you don't type of thing. It's either this way or that way, which is a very fixed way of looking yeah. at it. <laughs> That's exactly where my brain was going of like those who think that it's either one or the other likely have the fixed mindset because they can't see the bigger picture to it. It's just, it's true or it's not. Mm -hmm. But I agree with you that on a spectrum makes it a lot more relieving of like, I can change where I'm at here. It's not that it's just one or the other. I can be progressing towards where I want to go. And we don't need to live in these extremes or in these places of like, truly like this all or nothing, one of the mm -hmm. other black and white type of thinking. So if someone is in a place that they have more of a fixed mindset, um, they can still end up applying for coaching and be in a spot where they sign on, they agree, they see the spot that they need to change, but then they get into coaching and they end up being in a place where they might see change, but then they lose it and they fall off track again. And then they repeat that multiple times. They say they want to change, but they struggle to stay consistent with even if you change the game plan a million times, they might ghost you or be in a place where they're so excited, but they won't follow through. So how do you really navigate through that if it's like, okay, they're they're trying to change or they see they need to change, but then they're not fully getting there and I've changed the plan for them, but it's still not working. I tried to really motivate them, but it's still not working. Then how do you navigate through that for clients? Yeah, that is, I think, the most common concern that coaches have. And like, to be honest, this is why the health mindset coaching certification exists is because there is so much of this. I feel like I've done everything for this client and it's always coming from a place of really wanting to help, right? These coaches, nobody's in a coaching position being a coach if you don't want to help. Like that's literally at the end of the day, what we're trying to do. And so much of that quote unquote helping can actually be hurting in these manners. Like I, I hear all the time from similar to what you just said, like I'm trying so hard to motivate them or I've given them all the different like solutions and plans and like nothing seems to be working. What am I supposed to do with this person? It is really, really hard for the coach because they just feel like their hands are tied in those situations. And that's where you hear the, this, this person's just uncoachable. I just can't help them. There's nothing I can do for them. You know, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make them drink type of situation. But like my argument always in that case is that sure, that's absolutely the case. Like as a health and fitness coach, especially an online coach, you can't like show up at their house and drag them to the gym or whatever. I'm not asking you to do that, but I am asking coaches to take a little bit more responsibility. And in this case, you know, lead a horse to water, can't make them drink. Sure. But you can sweeten the water. You can make it look more appealing. You could maybe like bring, go grab a bucket and bring it to them a couple times and kind of like show them where you're getting the water from so that they can learn how to go get it themselves. There's a lot of different things that you can do as a coach. And I think so many coaches feel like their hands are tied, but that's because they only have nutrition and exercise strategies to rely on instead of mindset, behavior change, and psychology. And that is, at the end of the day, what we're doing. Like We're all in the business of behavior change. We're not just handing out plans. I mean, you can do that with some people. You know, if we're talking about like competitive bodybuilders and stuff, like, yeah, that's fine. Here, here's what you do this week. Execute the end. Like, we're just getting you ready for the stage. That's an entirely different situation. But if we're talking about lifestyle change, we're talking about wanting to help people change their lives for good, that's what we really need to be focusing on. And I think one of the main things that I, I heard in 
all the aspects that you shared about like wanting to motivate them or trying all these different things and nothing seems to be sticking is that there's a lot of, I'm throwing all this stuff at this person and they're not picking it up when the reality should be that person needs to be in the driver's seat, not you as the coach. And you need to start seeing yourself as the coach, not as the expert on your client's life. And not like, I have the solutions for you. You need to try this. You need to do that. I'm going to send you all of like the toxic cheerleader vibes. Like, you got this. No problem. Like, we got this next week. Like, no big deal. And instead, ask more questions and be more collaborative in that relationship. Get that person on board to help you make decisions and make the plan and be there with you every step of the way. Because at the end of the day, as much as our clients raise their hands and say, I just need someone to tell me what to do, the reality is that's not the greatest from a behavior change perspective. And in fact, it's so much better if you have that collaborative relationship and you're not just telling, prescribing, and like traditionally coaching, that you're actually guiding the client and you're having them join you through that guidance and through that journey. Mm -hmm. That's something we talk about a lot to to our coaches is like you are the guide and of really being able to dig into the fact of it being collaborative. And that's even what we talk about when we're onboarding is like, I want you to be a part of these decisions, not only so you feel a part of them, so you're more likely to abide by them, but you also are learning more through this, having power in this situation instead of, like you said, of just doing what I'm told to do, because then that's just someone who's really good at following instructions. And any of us can follow instructions theoretically, but it's the aspect of how do I have that autonomy for myself that I actually have lasting results. Mm -hmm. And that only truly happens from behavior change and mindset change and not just telling someone what to eat. And I think that is the most powerful thing that you can do. And you said of ask more questions and especially open-ended questions and being able to really dig into what is going on. And if anyone has ever been in therapy, and I'm not saying that a coach should cover the spot of therapy, it is not the same, but I'm using it as an example because the way that we are getting information is, or like mining information, so to speak, is similar, is that if you've ever been to therapy, most of the time they're asking you what is going on. They're not saying this is exactly what you should do in your life. They might give you feedback of like, hey, try this, try this, try this as a coach would, but they are asking of how how did that make you feel (laughs) for the most (laughs) common one, but really being able to see of like, okay, what can we do in your day-to-day to maybe change that? Oh, well, why do you feel this way about this? Why do you think this? And even if they might not have the self-awareness to really fully answer it, it at least gets them to start thinking about, oh, why is this the case? And I think that having more patience with that only helps because it's not just, okay, I throw a plan at you, you get results. It's I work with you on this collaboratively to figure out how to get lasting results. Yes. Oh, that's so, so good. And it was making me think, like, can you imagine if you went into a therapy session and they just like said, oh, why don't you just try this? Or why don't you just do this thing? The whole time you'd be like, but I didn't, I didn't tell you enough information for you to be able to give me that yet. Or like, wait, you don't act, you don't know the whole story. You don't really know what's going on with me. How could, how could you even have enough substance to go off of it? And that is how your clients are going to feel too. Like they may have a little bit more trust of like, okay, I'm just going to follow what Sue says because like I paid her and she's the expert in health and fitness, but like they are going to raise an eyebrow. Like, wait, but we didn't talk about that yet. Like, how could you know what's best for me? Because we didn't spend a lot of time on that yet. And wouldn't you rather go to your client and say, I have some ideas for you. And I've obvi- I've been coaching for a long time. I've helped a lot of people, but ultimately like, you know yourself best. So I would really love to hear like your thoughts on this like idea, where we could go with it, things you've tried in the past, what you think is going to work, what you don't think is going to work. So we can come together on a plan that is more likely to be successful and something that like right out the gate, we're going to be able to see some success with rather than spending the next like three to four months, three to four months, just like throwing spaghetti at the wall to see what sticks or whatever. So yeah, there's, there's a lot there. And it's looking at the aspect of when you are, Diving into all of this with a client, sometimes there can be some resistance of like, oh, I'm having to share so much information with you. But 
how are you going to make a decision without data and information to make that decision? And that's what I remind our clients or anyone is like, wouldn't you want it to be the most personalized and me to have the best understanding of everything that's going on? But the great thing within fitness is there are multiple paths to get to your end goal. And so it really isn't about saying, okay, I'm going to do a high carb, low fat with you, and this is what's going to happen. Normally, if it really doesn't matter, if there's not like an extenuating circumstance in place, I'll bring it of like, hey, we're going into a diet. We can create a deficit while either lowering food or increasing movement. Increasing movement does take time to recover from, something we need to take into consideration. But where you are now, would you rather move more or eat less? And that's normally what I ask clients going into a diet instead of just all of a sudden cutting their food because I realized that for myself of like, oh, I'm in a place where I like all of my food, but like I'm, I could easily add more steps in and I'm good with doing that. And it's like that makes it so much more of like, first, I have an option, which also shows me that instead of consuming content or information and thinking, oh, this person on Instagram said I have to do, I have to lower my food to lose weight or I have to do this to lose weight. Now you can critically think of how I can have different options about going about this. So then you're learning, having autonomy, having a choice in the decision, and it's fitting your life and your wants and your needs more. So it only makes sense that you would be more successful doing it that way than just ruling with an iron fence, fist of saying, do this now. This is how you're going to get results uh, because results can vary based on the person because everyone's different. Right, right. And you keep using the word autonomy, which I love specifically because it is a basic psychological need that we have as humans. This comes from self-determination theory, which is essentially a very, very long-standing theory in psychology when it comes to motivation and making changes long-term. And autonomy being one of them, belongingness is another, and competence is the third. So we have the ABCs of motivation and behavior change is how I usually talk about it. So we want to feel autonomous as humans. and Our clients want to feel autonomous. Everyone wants to feel autonomous, that we are making decisions for ourselves, that we actually have a say in the matter. We also want to feel like we belong, that we feel like this is this is a community, this is a place, this is a safe space for me. I actually truly belong here, whether it's with my coach or within my coaching team that I'm part of as a client or whatever. And lastly, with competence, we want to just feel like we are actually capable of doing the thing, right? So the more you can instill that into your coaching practices, the better. And I actually like to use it sort of as like an assessment too. So if you have clients who aren't sticking to the plan, they're non-adherent, you feel like they're uncoachable, whatever, come back to that like that assessment of autonomy, belongingness, and competence. Because more than likely, one, if not all, <laughs> of them are off. And if they were to be addressed and now suddenly that client feels autonomous, competent, and like they belong, things are going to change for the better. Oh, big time. And even a perfect example is right before I got on this podcast, I was answering some client emails and I had a client that asked some questions about the type of training. And she was like, what I've read is that this is going to be better. So can you just explain what's going on with this type of training? And she had a few other questions and she then was like, I'm so sorry for all of the questions. And I've had a lot of clients like that in the past of being like, I feel bad questioning you. I don't want Mm. you to feel like I'm questioning your intelligence or I don't want to feel like I'm putting like more on your plate. And I always reassure of like, I welcome the questions because I want to know what you're struggling with or what you're thinking because I don't know what I don't know. So I always very much so welcome feedback from anyone of like, hey, are you either receiving this or understanding this different so we can kind of fill this gap? And I went through and I was like, you're correct. The training that we are doing right now isn't the best for specific hypertrophy, but she also had a goal of being able to um, increase her endurance because she's actually going on like a back backpacking trip through Bhutan and going to have crazy days of backpacking. And so I went through and explained how everything was set up. And it's like, I could have taken that of like, oh my gosh, she's questioning what I'm doing. I should just tell her, do this and you're going to get results. Or I could sit here and explain my thought process and make sure that she's on board for it and in a good spot. So she has that competence instead of now she's questioning and going back and forth of like, I read this, but Sue says this, was this Mm -hmm. wrong or was Sue wrong? or who is right or wrong. And it's like, 
both of us were actually right. It was just looking at the circumstance from a different perspective. So now I can teach you about what this looks like in your day-to-day um, of how we make these decisions overall instead of just a lot of people take stuff from whether it's research or just from social media and they think that is the way, the truth of the life. But even if we're looking at research, it's like that is done inside of a bubble and we really need to think about the application and what that looks like in day-to-day. And I think that's another missing piece is people are like not looking at the total application to that person's life or to what they're doing to be able to really help them grow because you've created an environment. And that's something else you said in a post was um, you shouldn't ask yourself of how do I motivate my clients, but how do I create the conditions where my clients motivate themselves? And I think like conditions also could be environment, which in my clients motivate themselves. And I think that comes from being able to let people be inquisitive and to be able to create create an environment that they can ask questions and they can, again, collaborate on what is being done so that they have that autonomy and they have that belonging. Mm -hmm. Yeah, perfect. So good. And it's it's funny because when you explain the situation with this client, the direction that you went is obviously so much better from a growth mindset cultivation perspective for the client because it's like, I want you to ask questions. Don't keep this stuff to yourself. But then also sort of showcases your growth mindset too because in a different scenario where this coach wasn't you and it was a coach who maybe does lean a little bit more in the fixed mindset direction, their biggest goal is going to be essentially performance in a way that this is like from the research, we call it like a performance-based goal. So they are wanting to perform Form in a way like showcase that they are knowledgeable and that they are skillful because someone with a fixed mindset is truly worried at the end of the day that it is like a natural ability that maybe they don't have. So if you're a coach and you're of the, fix, of the fixed mindset when it comes to your coaching abilities and you have a client who's coming to you and saying like, hey, don't want to bother you, but like, I know we're doing this. However, I saw this type of training portrayed in a different manner. And I don't really think it's that great for hypertrophy. And I like, that's kind of what I want too. So like, I, I, I just have questions around that. Some of the fixed mindset as a coach is going to go back and be like, this is what we're doing. This is why I said we're doing it. And like end of discussion type of thing. And obviously it can come off as a way of like, hey, like no problem, totally understand, but like we're doing it this way and we'll talk to you next week. You know, there can be other ways that it comes off where it's not like snarky, uh, but it's coming from a place of like, I just want to protect myself and my image and like how I'm seen rather than, hey, something like what you did, Sue, with a growth mindset to go back to this client and be like, I totally understand. It makes sense that you would think this way because of this and it would make sense that you think that that way because of that. And if we were going in this direction, we would do it this way in, in kind of like fully explaining so that that person now feels really confident and comfortable asking questions and developing their way of thinking and thinking differently and having that like open mindedness in general. And you also sort of like awarding that and not just kind of like bearing down on what it is that you wanted to show them and kind of explain this is the way that I do things and this is the way it's going to be. And more or less like, hey, we could go that direction if this was your goal, but we're going this direction because you told me this was your goal. But happy to like continue to have a discussion about this and see if like there's a different or a better way to go about it and not necessarily putting yourself on this pedestal of like, I know best the way that I'm doing it is the the, the best only one way to do do it and instead showcasing all of these different ways and kind of sharing why you came to a conclusion and inviting them into that discussion rather than kind of like saying, no, you stay out there and listen to me. And that that's the way it's going to be. Mm -hmm. And that's like how coaching, I know you and I both feel very passionately about this, but that's how coaching should be. And that's why I struggle when I see other people promoting their coaching service and they are labeling it the same way of like, it's personalized. We do this, we do this, we do this. And then we end up getting the clients from those different coaching services come to us after they haven't hit their results. And it just makes me want to personally rip my own hair out because I'm like, it should be personalized. Like it shouldn't be like, that's the bars on the floor of like the 
type of service that you are paying for and that we are promoting is a personalized service. And so I am going to take into account where your mindset is, what your circumstances are, what you have available to you to build out a plan. And if I just tell you, do what I tell you to do, then that's really not personalized. And some could argue of like, oh, it's a proven plan that I know is going to work. But at the same time, it's like if you are offering a personalized service, then you should be able to look at the circumstance that that person has or look at a gap within mindset or mentality or whatever it may be and be able to see, I might need to approach this differently. Because if you're approaching every single thing the same, even if you are giving them different macros or anything like that, I don't feel like that's personalized because you're not actually taking the person into account. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, gosh. Yeah. The the word personalized, individualized, all of those fun words that we like to use in the fitness industry that like don't actually have that much merit a lot of the time, right? Like what does that actually look like? And for those of you that are listening that maybe don't have a coach right now or considering doing that in the future, like please do your due diligence when it comes to this stuff and ask Oh my gosh, I would love to get that question, right? With like on a a discovery call with a potential client of if they were to ask me, can you tell me a little bit more about like what personalization actually means? What individualized programming and, and coaching actually means at KJO Coaching? Like that would be the best question to get. You know how many coaches would stumble and not actually know how to answer that beyond saying like, oh, well, I'm gonna like give you your own training routine and you're going to get this spreadsheet with your name on it, you know? And like, and that's like, where macros are going to be yours. So like, yeah, it's your macros. <laughs> right. Exactly. So yes, please be on the lookout for that. Cause that can be, oh, such a good test to see if that coach is actually going to give you the, the level of coaching, the quality of coaching that you deserve. Mm-hmm. And that's like why I also very much so preach of like, look into the coaches that you are wanting to hire, like talk to their past clients, talk to people on their team and figure out if it is going to be a good fit. Because that also breaks my heart is when people come to us and they are like, I've already spent thousands and thousands of dollars on someone who promised me the same thing that you're promising me. And it's hard to separate that for people of like, they were lying and I'm not. Because to them, it might be like, you're lying too, because I thought that they were telling the truth. And so the more that you can do due diligence when you are looking at the person that you're putting your health and your your success in their hands of being able to dive into what really makes them them. And also, am I aligned with the way that they coach? Maybe you do just want someone that is going to hand you a plan, you execute it, you get those results. I personally don't want you as a client if that is you. So like, that's fine. Go with that other service. But if you are really wanting to be in a spot where you're able to have personalization, able to ask questions and to be able to like really see you as a person, then like, yeah, let's talk. Let's figure it out. I I would be happy to give you multiple people's names to go reach out to. Or I even tell people of like, go look at the highlights on my page. If somebody is tagged, they have approved that someone can reach out to them. Um, But if you like don't want to go through and message random people, I can get you in touch. But I also want to give people the space of like, I'm not just handpicking people who really like me and are going to talk nice about me. It's like, reach out to anyone that's worked Mm -hmm. with us. And and then like find out and I dare you to do the same for other services to really be able to figure out like, is this what I want? Does this align with what I'm trying to look for? And if you're looking for sustainability, I'm telling you, it's also not going to come at a $200 price tag. Um, so that's just one thing I will squeak in there. If you say I'm really looking to learn and for sustainability um, and for it to be very personalized, it's not going to come at a $200 a month price tag. Um, so being able to keep that within your expectations as well well but low reps is best high reps is best fruit is so it's good it's terrible for you. you should lift heavy high reps carbs low are needed keto squats are bad for your squats knees. are great you for should your squat ass over toes it's fine it fits my macros for idiots. when there are so many mixed messages going around it's hard to know what you should even do or focus on but that's exactly where physique development one-on-one coaching comes in you might have heard of online coaching or even hired a coach before but we believe in teaching you the why behind what we do while truly taking your life into consideration. We want to train, educate, and empower you to reach your goals and help you to stop spinning your wheels and just finally feel good. And hey, we're here to help you look good too. You need you. Your health is your wealth. So join Physique Development and let us be the last coach you ever need. 
I did want to ask you a few questions about you personally, because I think that a lot of times as coaches and as people in the fitness industry, people think like, oh, we have it all figured out. We don't struggle with anything anymore. We're all perfect. And I think that also as a coach and as somebody in the fitness industry, I find myself like actively trying to push against that of not trying to have everyone think that I have everything figured out and I never make any mistakes, but also balancing the far part of like wanting people to look at me as an expert that I do know what I'm doing because I see the side of like, well, if you can't do this for yourself, then how could you do it for others? So I think it's a good thing to talk about of like, we're all human beings. We're not all perfect. We don't have every single thing figured out. Sometimes my sleep isn't the greatest, even though I talk about how important it is to get sleep in. And sometimes I don't have the absolute best work-life balance when I talk about taking time for yourself. Um, so it's not that I'm a hypocrite, it's that I'm a human being. So with that, do you struggle? struggle with mindset still. Yeah. Oh my God. Of course I do. <laughs> um, for sure. Um, I think I answered this, I guess, similar question on another podcast recently. And I was like, you know what, this is like a really good question. And I don't get it. I don't get it asked very often. Um, but for sure. And I think something I need to be better about is actually like sharing when I work through like a mindset struggle myself and explain like, here are the questions I'm like running through my head. Here's like the activity that I'm doing with myself in these situations, because everything that I teach is stuff that I use in my daily life. And it's stuff that I'm using all of the time, but it's just become so natural to me. And like, okay, this is, this is how I'm feeling. Let's go this direction. And then like, then let's go this direction and see how that feels. And like, really try to play it out in all the different directions and, and really sit there with it. It, but it's just something that I just do that I'm like, you know what? I really need to like talk about it when I do do those things because mindset is always, always, always going to be something you need to continue to work on. And I think you can definitely get to a space and I can confidently say that I've gotten to this space where I have a growth mindset in most things, most of the time, but I do have fixed mindset situations that that crop up and I still have to kind of redirect myself. You have to remember too, and I hate like, I don't want the message to be that this is going to be constant work forever and you're never actually going to gonna reach that like light at the end of the tunnel where it says like, growth mindset and rainbows. Like you're not actually going to ever get there because it will get so much easier and it will become so much more like second nature to you. And we know this literally from just how your brain is constantly changing. There's a like, word for it. It's called neuroplasticity. And you're constantly creating new connections in your brain and like pruning back the old ones when you're not using them. So if you're consistently going towards growth mindset way of thinking, eventually that will be kind of your default pathway, but it doesn't mean that you won't oh, oh, kind of trip over into the, to the other lane every once in a while. So for sure, yes, long story short, I do still struggle with mindset barriers. I think where it comes up for me the most at this point is in business and knowing the direction that I want to go, where I want to take my business, but also wanting to maintain a certain lifestyle. And it's this is a, a battle that I have a lot with myself. And I know, like, logically, it's possible to have the, the big, amazing business and work 20 to 30 hours a week and, like, have, like, be able to travel and do all these things as I, I want all of those things. But I'm having a hard time a lot of the time seeing, like, how do I get there while still maintaining the current flexibility and lifestyle that I have? And there may need to be some like give and take along the way, but that is a, that is a current like fixed mindset thing that I'm trying to tease apart a little bit more is like, why can't it be both and why, why maybe it gets to be easy and it doesn't have to be more difficult. And I don't have to like dive back into the trenches. Like I, I did years and years ago when building a lot of this stuff. Cause I think there's a little bit of like fear of like going back to that too. So yeah, I definitely, I still battle with that. I mean, I also, I've been single for a whole year and a half at this point. So thinking about like dating and relationships and stuff too, like every once in a while I have the thought crop up of like, maybe I'm just not going to find that person. Maybe that person just doesn't exist for me. And I have to just be a-okay with being alone. And like, granted, yes, I know if it's been a year and a half has not been that long, but it is the longest I've been single in a very, very long time. So also being, you know, I'm 31 turning 32 this year. So those little things will come up too. And then I have to kind of work through like, okay, what evidence do I have for this? What evidence do I have against this? Like I play out these games in my head as silly as it may seem. And I know a lot of you may be thinking like, I don't want to just like sit there and ask myself questions and like, I seem like a crazy person, but like, that's the work and yeah. it does work. 
<laughs> like I could not be if you're watching this. I'm like bobbleheading over here. I'm like yes, yes, yes. Because actually, personally, also struggling within that within business and knowing where I want it to go, what flexibility I still want, and how much I've already put in. And again, also I've had to tear everything down to the studs and rebuild it. And it's hard freaking work. But it's something where I am also keeping that mindset of like I am going to figure it out, even though I don't have the answer right now. And that's something that I find comfort in of instead of spiraling like I would in the past of like, I don't know the answer to this. I need to know the answer is my mindset now. I still have moments of spiral. I'm, again, I'm a human being, but most of the time it's like, oh my gosh, I don't have the answer for this. And then my thought is just like, but I'm going to figure it out and I'm taking steps towards that. And as long as I'm taking some sort of step towards it, then I'm like, okay, I'm in a good place. I don't need to look at the huge mountain and think, oh my gosh, how the hell am I going to get over this? I literally just need to take one foot in front of the other. And I know it's cheesy and I know it's a cliche, <laughs> but it is truly how I think about it when I get overwhelmed and start to like get in my head about all these things. I literally like take a deep breath and I'm like, what is one thing that I need to do right now? And like, can mm -hmm. I get this done and take the next step forward? Um, but it is still hard and scary to look at it all. And then you have these doubts and you, you look at everything, but even talking about what you said within the relationship, I think a lot of it is how fast can you get to that decision or that thought process now where like in the past, it's like you might have had that thought and it took you like weeks and months to like be able to get over it. Whereas like now it's like, oh, I have that thought then I'm able to kind of talk myself into a better position within like an hour. And I think that like people will look at it and be like, oh, I still have these thoughts. But like instead of looking at your thoughts as all these bad things. It's like, how can I really look at it of, again, in its entirety of in the past, that might have took a, taken me so long to be able to even work through. But now I can just have a quick conversation with myself and just trudge onwards um, instead of being stuck or down a slippery slope. Yeah. Oh, I love this because it is so full circle from what we were talking about at the very beginning with like being introspective and self-aware in those cases. Like I don't, for those of you who are listening, how many times when you have maybe like a negative thought crop up or something that you're like, it's a, it's a belief that you have that maybe not even be that true, but it does come up every once in a while. And you literally stop and you think to yourself, like, where did that just come from? Why did I, where, why did I just have that thought? What just triggered that? Why, what evidence do we even have that that's true? And like, we're like being really real and honest with yourself, because a lot of times like these thoughts aren't coming out of nowhere. There is some evidence that is creating that thought in the first place. Something I like to talk a lot about with like folks who are trying to lose weight and they get into this place of like, maybe I just literally can't do it. I'm not one of those people that can lose weight and keep it off. Like that's not possible for me. If that's your belief system, number one, that's going to keep you running into wall after wall after wall. And it will be the case. There will be a self-fulfilling prophecy thing going on here, but really taking a second and thinking like, where is that coming from? And there is evidence for it. I'm sure you've tried a lot of stuff in the past that didn't work for you. I'm sure you've been been like on and off diets for the last like five to 10 years, maybe 20 years. So you have a reason to believe that. And I want you to feel like validated in that. But there's also a lot of evidence that doesn't necessarily support that that belief is true either. And you need to spend some time there as well. But yeah, I just, it, it makes me wonder how many people when they have like a negative thought of like, oh, like I'm not worth that, or I'm not worthy enough for that, or I could never do that, or I can't be that type of person. When that stuff comes up, are you actually taking a second and going, what the heck? Like, where did that, why did I just think that? Why did that just pop in my head? Where did that come from? And almost just like, you can, you can even bring some humor to it to be like, okay, where, who, who just put that in there? Like, where did that come from? That was not where this thought process was supposed to go. And like spend some time there instead of like, actually what a lot of people do is lean into that and be like, yeah, that's right. That is how I feel. That is who I am. That is what the, this is going to be. That is all that I can get. That's all that I can have. Um, and gosh, just like how, how different the world would be if we <laughs> if we were able to like take a second. <laughs> oh my gosh. And that's what I think so much is I when, when Alex and I will have conversations and say we're talking about someone, I'm just like, oh my gosh, if they could just like 
change their mindset. Like, it could literally change their life. Like, they do not understand how much they are standing in their own way, making excuses for themselves time and time again. And you also talked about, um, with us talking about business stuff of, like, think about when you first started coaching and onboarding a client. That felt like, oh, my gosh, this is going to take so much time. This is so hard. And maybe you could only do, like, one onboarding in every other week. Whereas like now, I've become so much more efficient at it. Not only do I have my systems, but I have the skill set um, and things in place where it's like, okay, I can do these a lot quicker or it's a lot less overwhelming. And that, again, is like that progress along the way of anything that you're looking at and you're thinking like this big hill in front of you or this big mountain, it's being able to really see of like, okay, if I can just take take the second, take take my thought into consideration, but then also just trudge forward in what I'm doing and recognize, like you also said, it gets easier and it gets easier and you become more efficient at it. Think about anything in your job or in your life that when you first started felt like it was a lot of work to do, where now it feels like second nature, where like brushing your teeth to almost everyone is pretty second nature. But for some people, like taking it to the next step of, okay, washing my face, that doesn't feel second nature. And like when I first started getting more into skincare, it was literally just like, can you wash your face every night? And now it's like, okay, you can wash your face and put the serum on. Okay, wash your face, put the <laughs> serum on, and now gua sha. And it's like, it becomes easier and you can add more steps and you can handle more capacity and more capacity, but you have to at least take the first step to recognize that and to move yourself forward in it. Yeah, yeah. I think that's can be so helpful for people to hear that this is literally just like any other skill, any other thing, any other habit that you've had to develop over time. And just like remind yourself of that in those situations when you're having those negative thoughts, fixed mindset beliefs, whatever, and you're wanting to get out of it. Even even the first step of recognizing when it's coming up, like, oh, I just had that thought. Like, where did that come from? That is light years ahead of where you probably were before when you would just let those thoughts happen and then let them like direct how you're feeling and let them direct how you're acting. So really, really important to remember. And I think with all of this too, is that please keep in mind that these thoughts, these beliefs, these things that crop up, they can literally just be that. You don't have to do anything with it. You can just be there. You don't have to try to change it. You don't have to act on it. You don't have to let it direct what your next move is going to be. You can just have that thought and go, huh, interesting, and go on with your day. Like literally, that can be it. So please, please remember that you have so much more power than you are giving yourself credit for. Yeah, you can do that with thoughts and feelings. Like just because you have a feeling does not mean you have to take it as a directive, does not mean you need to do something about it. And that also doesn't mean that you're brushing it under the rug or you are like pushing it down and bottling it up. It can just mean you acknowledge it, huh, and then you move on. And then mm -hmm. that's it. But sometimes, again, we make it harder on ourselves of like, I can't just acknowledge it and move on. It was a thought that came up, so I must think about it. But then that's also the same people who are like, you want me to just sit and think and ask myself questions? And it's like, <laughs> yes, I do. But just in a different way than what you're currently spending your time doing inside your own head, driving yourself clinically insane as you are going through that. So I just want you to get to a spot where you're not driving yourself insane um, as you go through it. But you did talk about what you're struggling with mindset. And I was going to ask of what skill you're working on to improve your Self within psychology and mindset, but I kind of want to sidestep that of saying like, what is the most recent skill or mindset aspect that you feel like you've been able to take a step over so that we don't just end up talking about the same things that we just talked about? Mm, okay. That's a really good question. Um, I think something that, something that I've conquered in a way, and I this is like from a business perspective, for sure. It's kind of like I had to, I didn't actually realize that I had this fixed mindset belief. So when I did realize that that belief was part of the equation, it was like, okay, we got to tackle that. We got to figure that out. So like, keep in mind that this is someone who has been researching. I don't do any research anymore, but I researched mindset for five years and coached on it and all of this stuff. And I'm still like, whoa, that was a fixed mindset belief that I had and I didn't even know it was there and it was like driving the bus and I didn't even notice the driver, right? And that was the belief that like the way that I was doing business had to be the way that I continued doing business. So it was like, this is what has got me to be successful. So again, there's evidence. See, this is exactly what I did. There's evidence for that belief that 
I've gotten to this level of success doing the things that I was doing. So why would I not just keep doing it? Like it makes logical sense. So then there's this fixed mindset belief of like, if I stop doing it this way, then I'm not going to continue to be successful. I'm going to, I'm going to go backwards, right? Is like where that belief turned into. But the reality is that actually to unlock that next level of business and to go somewhere else, you probably can't keep doing what you were doing before because otherwise you are going to just stay where you're at you have to make changes. And in fact, that even, even if you do want to stay where you're at, likely you're still going to have to pivot and do things differently too. So there's constant change and constant motion in business, which I know you know very well. So there was this belief that I had of like, this is what I have. This is the, my business structure is essentially what I'm talking about here needs to stay the same. And I just need to keep like doing things different within that structure. But the reality is I think I need to build a whole ass new structure if I want to take it to the level that I want to, which is scary. And because a a lot of this too is, is a risk, but again, this is where you have to come back with the mindset stuff. Like business ownership is a risk, Casey. It's a risk every single day. It's a whole job description. It's it's the whole whole job description. So, um, that is something that I had, I went through and I'm now on the other side of it and have actually taken action steps to start to restructure things and do things differently than I ever have before. So, lots of, lots of risk involved, a lot of money involved, a lot of like time and energy involved, but I am like now just placing faith in that, like, this is the structure that will take me to that next level. And like the previous structure, love love her, love her. (laughs) She got me where I wanted to be. (laughs) Yes, exactly. Exactly. So yeah, that was something that I I recently worked through and feel pretty confident that I'm on the other side of it. Now it's like, okay, well, what's next? You know, there's always going to be another thing that's attached to that. Um, but yeah. Yeah, that's really awesome to hear and a very similar situation as well for myself of what we've been working through of, again, that structure of this is how it's always been, so this is how it needs to be. And I was reading a book and it's like 10x is easier than 2x and it really I just finished that book. Well, very good book. Shout out to that book. You should go give it a read. Uh, But it talks about the concept of if you're just thinking, let's say you're making a million dollars per year just because I have easy numbers and you're wanting to two times that, be able to get to two million, you should really look at how am I going to get to 10 million? Because regardless, your goal is going to take you to that and you're going to have to solve different problems along the way to get to that. So why not just look at it and start solving those problems instead of making this small incremental change that you can like pull these small levers and start to move things up and up, but it's like it didn't actually change the structure to allow you to keep putting everything forward. And that was really, really helpful. And that book was something that as soon as I got, I think I was like a few chapters in, I immediately ordered a second copy. And I was like, Alex, you need to read this. And then actually someone ended up sending it to like my mom and sister. So I was like, oh, that's perfect. Everyone should read it uh, because it really does break down a lot of those thoughts of like, Well, just, and for me, I'm someone who Alex is the dreamer and he can look huge picture, look way ahead, have like 12 steps ahead. That's not how my brain works. My brain works on what is the next step. And that's Mm -hmm. helpful for me in a lot of ways, but it also can hurt me in a lot of ways that I'm literally just looking at, okay, let's not look at 10 steps and what we would need to do for the full thing. It's like, let's just look at the next step. And so it's been very helpful to reframe my mindset of like, okay, you need to open your mind and think bigger instead of being stuck. And again, this narrow way of this is the only way to do it. And I try to remind myself with anything, if I have the thought of this is the only way to do it, is to like bat that thought down of like, there has to be another way because everything, again, evidence in my life has shown that there is more than one way to accomplish what I'm trying to accomplish. And it also shows me that if I put something in action and it doesn't work, I can always change it. And it's normally not the end of the world because even though we are taking risk, we are taking risk intelligently in the fact of like, okay, if I am going to make this huge risk in this investment, I'm still going to make sure that if everything went to absolute shit, I could still do the bare minimum here. Mm -hmm. And like, that is a lot of risk, even though you still have like, okay, I could still do the bare minimum. It's like, you're taking everything extra and putting it out there. So it's really scary to do that, but it's setting you up for that longer term success overall. And that's something else I always remind myself of like, are you willing to exchange short term discomfort for long term function and comfort? And my answer is always yes. Like I will always take the long term comfort because I've been in the short term comfort and it's actually not that comfortable. (laughs) 
<laughs> it's an illusion. Yeah, it's like all an illusion. <laughs> it's a trick. <laughs> uh, well, I have one more question for you. And what w- it was, what is the skill that you struggled the most to teach to other people? Because mm-hmm. you do have a lot of courses that are really incredible. And I'm going to talk about it more before we end this episode. But I also know that when it comes to teaching, it's partly because you have to know it well enough yourself to break through things to be able to teach. But then it's also of sometimes things make sense in your brain. And then it's hard to like really push that information onto someone else in a way that it makes sense to them. So what do you feel like is the skill that you've struggled the most to teach? Yeah. You know, I don't even, uh, what comes up for me first is not necessarily like a concept that's hard for me to put into words and like translate over to someone else, but more or less it's a, it's a skill that people get, they understand it like pretty easily, but it's really hard for them to really mesh into their coaching practices because they're so used to doing it a different way. So what I'm talking about here is a I don't want to call it a mistake, but more or less like a misstep that coaches have a lot of the time. And it is to immediately provide solutions. And we kind of talked about this already um, through other conversation, but it is such like a, a natural innate tendency, especially for coaches to just immediately be like, we'll try this, go do this. Like, here's the solution. This is what needs to happen. You're you're not hitting your protein intake. Okay, cool. Here's a PDF with high protein snack options. Like we're so quick to do that. And so when I share this with coaches that like doing that all the time is, is not really going to help them build autonomy and build competence and, and go off on their own and like not be so dependent on you. And like anyone who says you have a needy client, like that's it's probably on you as the coach, right? So I start talking about this and like they have the light bulb moments. They're like, yes, this makes sense, but it is really hard for them to implement because they're so used to just wanting to immediately help and they they think they know the solution and it, and it might be the correct solution, but we don't want to take a gamble on that and just like make assumptions that we know what the client wants. So that's again, where these like questions and conversations and collaborative type of natured relationships really come into play and are truly the best when it comes to behavior change. But it is something that we, we do actually inside uh, motivational interviewing, which is a communication method for behavior change. And I teach that a lot inside the mindset certification there is a term called the writing reflex. And that is kind of, that's what I'm talking about here essentially is this this automatic reflex that we have to just like try to fix and to try to like write the situation when that's really not usually the best route to take with clients. So again, it's a little bit less of like, like people get it. They're like, oh yeah, that makes sense. And then they're like, oh my God, this is so hard to (laughs) actually do, especially if they've been coaching for a period of time and they've been doing it that way for a while that like, it is like, yeah, old dog, new tricks type of situation. (laughs) Yeah, I definitely think like habitual because it's hard to stop something you've done for a long time. But do you think that any of that also comes from being in a place where they're insecure of like, I need to provide above and beyond. So I need to have these things already. Because I think especially within where social media is right now and how everyone, it feels like, oh my gosh, everyone's doing so much that it can feel like, how can I stand out? I just need to show how many resources I have and how helpful I can be. Yes. Oh, I'm sure that is a a large part of the story too. And just I've had pushback from students before saying something along those lines of like, but Casey, they're, they're coming to me. They're paying me for my expertise. If I just shoot back questions instead, it's going to feel like I don't actually know anything. And I think that like, that's a, it's a valid, fair way to feel. But also this is where like having conversations with your clients and setting expectations on the forefront of like, okay, this is how we do things around here. Like I'm going to bring you into the decision-making process. I'm going to bring you into the planning process. I'm going to make you think probably a little bit harder than you may have had to think with previous coaches, but that's because I have a background in behavior change science. And I know that this is what's going to set you up for success so that you don't have to spend years and years and years with me so that you can actually like graduate from working with me and feel like you can do this stuff on your own. Does that sound good to you? And they're going to be like, yes, of course, like get their buy-in in that way and set those expectations 
And then in certain situations, if they, if a client ever is like, oh, I don't, can you just tell me, like, I don't really need to have a full conversation about it or whatever. It's like, Hey, remember, like, this is what we're doing here. Like there's, there's a reason to this. If they can see the value in it, if your clients understand the value and how you're doing this type of coaching, they're not going to have a problem with it. In fact, they're probably going to lean in and I would encourage them to, and say like, when I'm challenging you with some of these questions or we're having these conversations and I'm not just like providing you a solution on a silver platter, I would really, really love for you to like lean into that and spend some time there with me because that means that there's something there. And I think you're going to get a lot out of it. Like, can I count on you to do those things? So really, really spend some time with them on that. And one thing I do want to say, like a disclaimer with all of this is that not every single client needs to be treated the way that I was just explaining, especially like there are situations where maybe you've been working with someone for a couple years and they're a coach themselves. They're more advanced. Like if they're coming to you and they're like, I'm really having a hard time with like my peri workout windows and figuring out when I like how much carbs I need to have like pre versus post. Like I, I just can't going back to this person and being like, well, I don't know, what have you tried? And like, we're like, obviously some information is going to be helpful, but just like going back and forth, like they probably just need to be like, have you review what they're currently doing and saying, okay, what I think is that maybe we're a little bit too carb heavy pre-workout and instead need to move some of that post-workout. So let's try that. Like that is perfectly fine in those instances. It's more or less with the clients who are struggling to adhere to the plan or can't figure out how to stay consistent with things. Like, are you seeing this pattern over and over again? Where like on the weekends, they always like, quote unquote, fall off the wagon or whatever. Like those are the clients that we're talking about. Not the, not the ones that are maybe more advanced and have, have it figured out for the most part, but are just like learning to tweak some things from like an advanced strategy perspective. And that comes from, again, seeing each person as an individual person. And I think that sometimes when people learn a new skill or learn something new altogether, they then start seeing it in everyone. And then they want to like do that for them. So I've seen this mm -hmm. with people of like, okay, maybe they got some more information about hormones. So then now they see everything as like this person has a hormone imbalance. And so like you get really into mindset and you're like, this person just needs help with mindset. And so it's being able as a coach to use your deductive reasoning and your experience and skill to say, does this person need help with mindset? Does this person need this? What does this person need from me? If you like can make that decision or figuring out how to make that decision um, of what it looks like. Um, and so I think that when we're looking at what you, everything you just said of being able to set the expectation for the client, that communication is so, so important. Because again, if somebody doesn't understand what you're doing or why you're doing it, then it can feel like I'm just following this blindly. Or again, why are you asking me questions? I paid you to do this. But if you clue them in, if you explain this is the process, this is what you can expect, then it's only going to make the experience better for everyone because they're on the page. And I think that that's something that coaches and just humans in general overlook is that you think that everyone knows what you're thinking. And it's like, they they don't. No one's a mind reader. So you just need to speak up and say what is going on, what is going to be expected. And that clears the air so much. Like, I cannot tell you how much that helps within client relationships if you just give communication and clarity to them about what they should expect, what's going on, instead of selling a pipe dream or just assuming that they know what your plan is um, for them and having those checkpoints along the way to touch base and be like, are, are you in it? Are you good? Do you need help with this? And then keep on trucking on. And I know I said that that was my last question, but I did think of one other thing because um, I've seen you post about it a lot and it just sparked into my brain. But um, how do you separate one of those Instagram mindset gurus from someone who actually knows what the fuck they're talking about. Oh yeah. The good old gurus. <laughs> it is, it's tough for me because like, I'm not, I'm not out here to like bash anybody, but it's tough for me because I also, on, on one hand, I'm like super stoked that everyone's like, mindset is important. Behavior change is important. Client psychology is important because I'm like, yes, thank God. Like finally people are seeing the light type of thing. But then the problem with that is that we have people who are wholly untrained in these areas and are just slapping mindset coach in their Instagram bio and getting on sales calls with clients and saying, yeah, we're doing health and fitness, but don't worry. Like I'm going to help you with your mindset too. But they number one, have no idea that there's actually a science to mindset. And I don't fault anybody for not knowing this because I didn't know it until I found a PhD program at North Carolina State University that had a mindset lab that I went and worked in. So I don't like, I'm not out here putting my 
myself on the pedestal and like expecting people to know these things. I don't, but there is a significant difference between someone who says I'm a mindset coach and has zero training in behavior change mindset, knowing how to ask some of these questions that we've been talking about, et cetera. And then someone who I mean, to shameless plug, my own program has gone through the health mindset coaching certification, has done, I don't know, motivational interviewing workshops, has spent time like really understanding, like getting into the research of behavior change and mindset. Like there's an entirely different quality to that coach, entirely different. And I could sit down and have a conversation with both of these people and know immediately which one has that training and which one does not. And it is funny. I actually, um, one of my friends, Alessandra, she has a team of coaches and all of her coaches have been through HMCC as well. And she did, um, what was it? I think she ran like a, a mentorship program. And also when she was like interviewing for her, her coaching staff, she was like, it's so funny, even just ha- like conversating with these coaches, I can tell which of them have been through your program and which ones haven't. So it's not only just me that's can pick it out at this point. Like if you've been exposed to this stuff, you can see the difference quite easily. And I think a lot of it does come down to just like the the quality of questions that are being asked, how quickly that coach is able to sit on their hands instead of immediately trying to fix and provide solutions. And also just like understanding how the brain works in at a very, very, I'm not asking anyone to be like a neuroscientist here, but like just basics of human behavior and why people do what they do and don't do what they want to do. And that's, I guess that's on like motivation, goal setting, habit formation, self-control, things of that nature that again, such a strong, crucial foundation of everything that we do. And it's not enough to just say that you're a mindset coach. Yes. Mic drop. (laughs) So (laughs) on that, if you want to find your own that has been through HMCC or on Casey's team in the description box and show notes, I will have the uh, website that you can go check out Casey's coaching and her team. I will also have the website for if you're listening to this, because I know there's a lot of coaches that listen um, and wanting to personally go through or send your team through HMCC. HMCC. I'll give you a little bit of insight. So it is a 13-week program for health and fitness professionals to gain a strong understanding of the psychology aspects or psychological aspects aspects, they don't learn how to read apparently, of coaching. (laughs) Um, So mindset and behavior change. And you'll be able to combat things with your clients like the all or nothing thinking, fixed mindset, self-sabotage, lack of willpower, low motivation, and more. And the great thing here is if you are a coach, that HMCC is actually approved as a continuing education provider for multiple different places like NASM and ACE and ISSA um, and ACSM and the rest of them are all on Casey's website, which again, I will have linked down below. And like we said, this will be going live in August. So um, I'm not exactly sure when this podcast is going up, but it will go up before August so that anyone who wants to get signed up for HMCC that they can. Um, But it's an incredible thing that, like I said at the beginning, I'm so, so incredibly excited for our staff to go through it. I've loved being able to learn from you through the years and see all of the information you put out for free free. Um, And that's something we also have in common is just loving to provide free information and really help people, like you said, and teach people about what we're doing. And I hope people can see the passion that we both have um, and why we want to be able to create so many resources to make it accessible for as many people as possible. So don't forget to check out Casey's new podcast. Again, that's called Not Another Mindset Show. And I'll have that link down below. You can follow Casey on Instagram. She has an incredible Instagram. Um, Again, a wealth of knowledge. So don't be a stranger. Go say hey to her. Um, Sign up for her courses. Buy one of her uh, webinars, um, support her because she's stellar and she she knows what she's talking about. Oh, you're so sweet. Thank you. <laughs> Everybody come over and hang out. <laughs> yeah, go, go say hey. Um, and uh, we will have Casey on for a gym girl chats and just be able to chit chat more a little bit. Of course, we still chit chatted because we're, we're girls. We're here. We're girls. <laughs> we're, thing. we're just girls. Uh, but we, you know, tackled, I feel like some really good concepts. Um, and information about mindset, fixed mindset. And hopefully there are some light bulb moments for people of being able to see where they might need to take just one step forward. Yeah. Beautiful. We covered a lot of ground. I feel like this was solid. Yeah. Perfect. Well, thank you guys so much for tuning in. Again, go check out Casey's podcast and everything that's linked below and we'll catch you on the next episode.